Let's be honest, you clicked on this video because you're stuck. You're staring at a leak code problem right now, probably a medium, and there's this knot in your stomach because you simply can't figure it out. Deep down, you know you should be able to solve it, but you can't. You've tried everything. Just cry neat code, people say. Read Cracking the Coding Interview by Algo Expert. But nothing's clicking. You feel stuck, maybe even defeated. Here's what nobody tells you. Those people out there crushing leak code, they aren't naturally smarter than you. They just discovered a completely different approach that turns data structures and algorithms from this impossible mountain into something you can actually master. My name is Amon, and I use this secret system to go from barely solving two sum to confidently tackling 90% of leak code mediums and some hards as well. This exact approach got me internships at Amazon, Shopify, and HP, plus multiple six-figure offers by age 21. And if you stick with me until the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to make that exact same transformation in just eight weeks. Your programming life will never be the same. Let's dive in. The first principle to truly mastering data structures and algorithms is to stop trying to learn it in the traditional sense and start doing it. Now you're probably thinking, what the hell am on? Stop learning to master learning? Here's what happened to me in my second year. I spent an entire semester reading Introduction to Algorithms, a massive textbook. I highlighted everything, made flashcards for big O notation, and could recite the definition of a hash table in my sleep. When I finally attempted my first Leetcode problem, literally just two sum, I stared at the screen for 45 minutes and couldn't figure it out. Meanwhile, my roommate Josh was taking a completely different approach. While I was reading about binary search trees, he was on HackerRank building them. While I was memorizing sorting algorithms, he was implementing quicksort from scratch and breaking it on purpose to see what happened. Six months later, Josh had his first internship offer, I was still reading about algorithms. What you have to understand is that data structures and algorithms is like learning to drive. Most people approach it by studying the driver's manual cover to cover, memorizing traffic laws, and watching instructional videos about parallel parking. They can tell you the exact stopping distance at 35 miles an hour and recite right of way rules perfectly, but they've never actually sat behind the wheel. The confident drivers, they learned by getting in the car, stalling a few times, and figuring out how the clutch feels. They learned through their hands and muscle memory, not their textbooks. This is what I call the tutorial trap. You know that feeling when you're trying to learn guitar? You've watched dozens of YouTube videos about finger placement, chord progressions, and music theory. You can explain why a C major chord works and what makes a pentatonic scale special. But the first time you pick up an actual guitar, your fingers feel like sausages and nothing sounds right. The guitarists who actually get good, they learn by pressing down strings until their fingertips hurt, making terrible sounds until they figured out what worked. See, your brain only learns through challenge. So here's the game-changing shift. Stop passively consuming content about data structures and algorithms and start wrestling with actual problems. Only after you've struggled and maybe failed should you look up the solution or concept. Challenge first, learning second. That's the secret. But even if you embrace the challenge first approach, there's a massive trap waiting for you. The second principle might sound equally counterintuitive. Stop blindly following every comprehensive roadmap out there. I know what you're thinking, but Leak Code is amazing. The Blind 75 is a gold standard. And you're absolutely right. Leak Code is brilliant. He's actually a personal friend of mine, and the Leak Code 150 is an incredible resource that builds on the legendary Blind 75. But here's the brutal truth. You ain't got time for that. Here's the brutal reality I discovered after failing my third technical interview in a row. I was studying for the wrong test. During my second year at university, I was obsessed with being comprehensive. I had spreadsheets tracking my progress through hundreds of Leetcode problems. I was grinding through advanced dynamic programming, studying obscure graph algorithms, diving deep into complex tree structures that sounded impressive. Then I stumbled across this research from Algomonster that completely shattered my approach. They analyzed thousands of real technical interviews from major tech companies and found something shocking. 85% of all entry-level technical interviews only test V6 concepts. That's it. Six topics. Arrays and strings, hash tables, two-pointers, linked list, depth-first search and breadth-first search, and simple tree slash graph problems. And no, dynamic programming was not on that list. I was spending most of my time studying advanced topics that showed up in less than 5% of actual interviews. It was like training for a marathon but practicing pole vaulting. That math hit me like a brick wall. If I focused exclusively on those six high frequency topics for eight weeks instead of trying to master everything, I could achieve 10x better interview performance in a fraction of the time. And that's when I developed what I call the Pareto problem set. 50 carefully curated problems that cover 90% of what actually shows up in real new grad and internship interviews. No advanced graph theory, no complex dynamic programming patterns, just the core patterns that companies actually test. The results? 
Within two months, eight weeks of approaching, of switching to this focused approach, I went from bombing interviews to developing my coding interview skills enough to land multiple offers. And I'm giving this entire problem set away completely for free at amalmanazar.com slash leetcode. It's designed around the Algo Monster data, maximum impact, and minimum time investment. While other people are grinding through hundreds of random problems, you'll master the 50 that actually matter. But even with the perfect problem set, there's one mistake that will still derail everything. Here's the third critical principle. You cannot do this alone. Let me tell you about my darkest period of college. Junior year, I'm convinced I'm just not cut out for this. Every study session felt like banging my head against a wall. I pick random lead code problems, maybe twice a week if I was feeling motivated, struggle for an hour, and then slam my laptop in frustration. Two years, two full years of this cycle with essentially zero progress. Then something changed. I enrolled in an algorithms course that had mandatory weekly problem-solving sessions. Suddenly, I wasn't studying alone anymore. I was in a room with 20 other students all working through the same problems together. Within just a few months, everything clicked. Not because the problems got easier, but because I finally had structure and accountability. Here's what I realized. Studying algorithms alone is like trying to learn a sport by yourself. You can read about basketball strategy all day, but until you're on a court with other players, calling plays and making mistakes together, you're not really learning the game. The absolute game changer was what I started calling my lead code study squadron. Four people from my algorithms class who met three times a week at the library. Here's what made it work. We weren't just doing homework together, we were creating healthy competition. When my study partner Pranav would solve a binary tree problem faster than me, it genuinely bothered me. I'd go home that night and practice tree traversals for an extra hour because I wanted to keep up. But most study groups fail spectacularly. I've seen it happen dozens of times. Here's the difference. Number one, you'll want to keep it intimate. Three to four people maximum. Any bigger and you start to get the bystander effect. People start coasting while others do the work. Number two, structure the chaos. We'd always bring four to five specific problems to work on. Usually two to three mediums and a couple of easier ones to warm up. No random browsing or let's just see what looks interesting. Next up, commit to the schedule. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday afternoons for two and a half hours each. Missing a session felt like letting the team down, which created natural accountability I could never generate alone. The combination of consistency, accountability, and healthy competition creates an environment where improvement is inevitable. But even with the perfect practice system, there's one final piece that separates service level memorization from true mastery. Here's the fourth and final principle. You must understand every concept under the hood. Let me tell you about two different approaches I witnessed firsthand during my junior year algorithms course. There was a student, I'll call him Tyler, who had what looked like the perfect system. He'd solved over 100 LeetCode problems, had color-coded notes for every topic, could explain the theory behind any algorithm you threw at him. In study sessions, he'd confidently walk through solutions and everyone thought he was the guy to beat. Then there was Maya, who seemed way less prepared on the surface. She'd only worked through maybe 50 or 60 problems total, but here's what was different. Every single one of her problems in those 50, she understood completely. When she explained dynamic programming, she didn't just recite the recurrence relation. She'd draw out exactly how the memoization table filled up, explained why we needed overlapping subproblems, and could adapt the approach to variations she'd never seen before. Guess who crushed the Google interviews that semester? Tyler memorized patterns, Maya understood systems. And in follow-up questions, which is where most candidates crash and burn, Maya thrived while Tyler fell apart. This is what I called a Wikipedia problem. You can read the entire Wikipedia page about cars, engine types, transmission systems, fuel efficiency ratings. You might even be able to explain how an internal combustion engine works in theory. But if something breaks down on the highway, you're calling AAA. Most people study algorithms like Wikipedia articles. They collect facts without building understanding. Most people treat DSA like memorizing dance moves. They learn the steps. Use BFS for shortest path, DFS for connectivity. Use dynamic programming for optimization. But they don't understand why these tools work. This is what I call the car mechanic test. If you glance under a car hood and tell yourself, yeah, I see how it all fits, could you actually fix an engine when something breaks? Of course not. You just memorize the surface. The same thing happens with algorithms. You memorize that sorting is O of n log n, but you don't understand which sorting algorithm achieves that complexity or why. So when an interviewer asks a follow-up, like what if the input has special properties, you're stuck. So here's how to actually go nuclear on understanding. You'll want to use the five wise system that Toyota developed for root cause analysis. Let's say you're solving a problem and you realize sorting takes too long because it's O of n log n. Don't just accept that. You'll want to ask, why is sorting n log n? What specific algorithm gives us that time complexity? How does that algorithm work step by step? 
Why was it designed that way? And when would I choose this over other approaches? Keep asking why until you hit bedrock, the fundamental principle that makes everything else make sense. When you use the five whys approach consistently over eight weeks, something magical happens. You stop memorizing solutions and start understanding systems. The follow-up questions that destroy other candidates become opportunities for you to shine. And there you have it, my secret formula for mastering data structures and algorithms in 2025. Number one, challenge first, learning second. Stop consuming, start wrestling with problems. Number two, focused beats comprehensive. Use the Pareto problem set instead of massive roadmaps. Number three, accountability is everything. Form your lead code club for consistency and competition. And number four, don't nuclear on understanding. Use the five wise technique to build unshakable foundations. This isn't just about passing coding interviews, it's about fundamentally transforming how you approach complex problems, a skill that'll make you unstoppable through your entire career. When you combine focused practice with deep understanding and external accountability, something incredible happens. You don't just memorize algorithms, you start thinking like the engineers who created them. Now, I know what you're thinking. This sounds amazing, Amon, but where do I actually start? That's where my software engineering accelerator comes into play. We don't just give you the theory, we walk you through it, implementing this entire system step by step. You'll be working with full-time FANG engineers and recruiters to get the accountability, the structure, and the guidance to make this transformation in the next eight weeks and land your dream job or internship. So if you're interested in the accelerator and landing your dream job or internship, check out the top link in the description. And if you want that Pareto problem set completely for free, go to amonmanazo.com slash leetcode. If you want more advice about how to master leetcode, click this video over here. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.